Hi everyone, welcome to our new video series. My name is Jan Gustafsson and I'm thrilled to be reunited with fellow Magnus Carlsen's trainers, seconds, Peter Heine Nielsen, Magnus Carlsen's head coach, and Laurent Fressinet, Magnus Carlsen's French coach, are both here and we will be going through the World Championship match 2021. Our experiences with it, the games, what we prepared, where we felt things went well, where we felt things didn't go well. Peter, we have different perspectives because we were in different locations. Very much. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about it because you were in Thailand during all the match and I was in Dubai with the Magnus and the Geologist. It's non-chess team. So I see some kind of debriefing where we will discuss what was the mood in Dubai, what was happening in the technical department in Thailand. And we got to sort of basically compare notes and uh, yeah, get the two kind of inside looks uh, from the match. Very much so. And Laurent, we are actually in your private home. Thanks for having us. It's a big pleasure to, to welcome both of you. And I'm sure it will be interesting to talk to you guys about the match. Likewise. So we hope you guys enjoy the series with our behind the scenes insights. <laughs> See you then. Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses. Chessable. I'm ahead of the game.
Hello, everyone. Sorry, slight uh, technical glitch at my end there, uh, but we're ready to start and I'll accept random challenges. So hopefully people are around and let's go 1e4 in the first game. And why not? Let's continue my uh, coffee house repertoire with a Grand Prix attack. Now, Grand Prix or D4? I went D4 the last time, so let's switch to F4 today. So I'll play the Grand Prix. My bishop's going to come out to B5, castle kingside, D3, queen E1, queen H4, and try and deliver checkmate. Some barbaric stuff. But we'll see how it goes. E6 is quite a solid defense, unfortunately. You really want the Fianchetta bishop to be able to, to uh, break through with f5. I'll play the same plan. Hmm. Okay, at least now I can play against these doubled pawns. So, what move order? I'll start with d3. Okay, so my plan is to win this pawn on c5. A more positional plan now. Do I need to hurry? Let's start with king h1. Uh, let's try and figure out my move order here. The moves I want to play are b3, knight a4, c4 to fix the pawn. I want to do it without allowing too much counterplay. Okay, let's just try it immediately. Probably c4 should be played at some point, not allowing my plan. Okay, fix, and then try and win it. Uh, thanks, Giovannis, for replying to Silvo's question there about how to challenge. If you're a premium member, then uh, click on that link, and I'll uh, see who I can get. play as many games as I can in the hour and a half. So I hesitated as I couldn't decide how to attack this pawn. So we'll go around. Go after my bishop. That's not the end of the world. The... So my knights can do the job. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, another request for Alakines. Well, I'll play the uh, perk in the first game I get the opportunity to play, and then the Alakine in the second. Now, I don't think the c5 pawn is defensible anymore. And the problem is for uh, black in general that the bishop on b7 is so bad as well. I can start winning pawns without allowing any activity and compensation. I quite like this sort of, this structure I think is very easy for white to play. So the plan of winning this pawn is so straightforward. It's a bit of a shame that uh, I didn't get the mating attack on the king side yet, but there's no rush. I'll uh, try and go back to it. Bishop h6 is a good move. I see some pieces starting to arrive in my position, taking on f4 and queen h4, getting rid of my bishop. So I need to be a bit careful. Analyzing things with knight takes c5, take on f4, take on d4, but that's all a mess. Uh, so how should I do this? Let's just retreat for the moment. I think if this bishop on h6 can't get into the game, then I'm not getting mated. But I might be proved wrong. What time control are we playing this one? 3 2. Okay. So I think a minute isn't the end of the world. Uh, shouldn't get flagged yet. The queen h4 looks scary, but I'm hoping that my bishop is defending enough. You can get rid of the bishop with knight e3, but then. Uh, 
the night isn't stacking, so. Now, that bishop is still quite a bad piece on b7, so it'd be a shame to take it. Take, I wish I can always run back against a g1. Okay. The box is constructed over there. Last band to blitz, I was incredibly fortunate. I won so many completely lost positions. That's, uh, there's a good video uh, up of uh, my game with Ellen from the previous day, the previous band to blitz, Ellen Nielsen, where I was completely lost. And somehow she saw some ghosts and uh, let me off, but that really should have been a loss. I'd be quite happy if my bad luck comes this afternoon. And then I get lucky in the uh, chess of all masters. Be far better that way around. Hmm, this is a crafty move, dangerous ride. So I can win the exchange with knight d7, but then c5, and this bishop that goes from being a terrible piece now comes to life. 18 seconds. Okay, let's be boring. I can get the queens off the board then. My extra piece should count. Okay, move the knight for the moment. Chase the queen. 11 seconds. That's not that one you can't play. The door was open temporarily. Oops, allowing that rook in is something of counterplay. Seven seconds. Let's hope that my new mouse doesn't malfunction. And yeah, that bishop wasn't doing a lot, so it was a bit of a shame to take it. But uh, now I can move my knight without worrying I get mated. Let's open up some lines for my pieces. And start doing various checks. My idea was to play f7, though. I don't think that pawn can be stopped. The rook a7 check being tempted as well. Thanks, Dangerous Ride. Got a bit low on time, but I think yeah, these structures are very pleasant for white. I'll accept another random pairing. Ooh, jump. And if I'm, I've played a few times now, and I promised Perk in the first game. We can move to Alakai next. At least I've got some experience of playing the Perk. And the pits. Uh, bishop g5. Now, what's going to play here? Bishop g7 is the main move. I think I want to play c6. Because white wants to exchange his bishops on h6. So uh, now is e5 a threat yet? So there's yeah, two advantages to leaving the bishop here on f8. That one. Uh, the plan of bishop h6 loses the tempo because my bishop is not yet on g7. And two, e5 is sometimes really annoying, but sometimes you can respond now with b4 because ef doesn't attack a bishop on g7. So that square being empty. But that's as far as I can remember in this position. If I go knight, d7 is the normal move. Am I worried about d5? Uh, probably not yet. I'll play as many useful moves as I can with leaving the bishop here. Okay, let's be greedy and try and win this bishop. Is it necessary to play with the laboratory, Mr. Souza? Sorry, I don't follow. Okay, at least I've gained something. I always like winning this bishop. Hope that uh, long term, this one that can now be so that's it can now be safely fianchettoed, but is e5 going to be a problem? Do I stop it with e5? Probably this is a pawn to d5, but some compensation. <laughs> Dangerous Ride wrote, I don't know how to play the Sicilian against GMs, hoping he'll play London system against me. 
uh, yeah, I never play the London system. Go for things that are a bit more aggressive. I know London system can be played in an aggressive manner, but uh, it's never really been for me. I think I might have played it in a couple of games, but only when I'm hoping for something else. Here I'm fairly happy with this bishop. I've got a big weakness on f5, but it's not so easy to get at it. So let's attack that pawn. My king is a bit drafty as well, but I'm hoping that uh, there's no way of taking advantage. The pawns on c6 and b5, coupled with the Dasswear bishop, give quite good control. But this one is no increment, 3 0, so I should speed up. Let's carve out some more dark squares. Now I want a piece on c3. I guess bishop b4 or queen a5 are both going to be met with uh, knight b1. Do I? Mm, I'm from the, the big problem always. Start to see some interesting tactics and uh, end up losing on time. I'll, how shall I do this? I'll drop back this way, because I imagine he might go knight b1 anyway, because there's holes. It's an interesting move, but I think I've just spent way, way too long on it. Uh, okay, let's take that. But now I'm just going to have to start doing some pre-moves. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to mate any more. But it'll still be more difficult. 22 seconds, let's go. I think I'm going to try and break through. Okay, that's... We're only going to play on the queen side now. I want to be able to play g4 at the moment. I don't really want to let this knight come round. Oh, f5. Looks like a good move with the bishop and knight. Currently being forked. It would have been even better last move, but knight d2 wasn't to reply. I'm almost certainly going to lose on time. So I'm relying on Boris to play e4 if he takes. I think my position is very good but I'm not confident of my mouse handling skills with 15 seconds. But we'll see. So I don't really have enough time to glance over at chat now, but I saw someone asked about my name being unusual, and it is indeed. I've only met one other going. Well, that's a piece. Uh, but I was named after Sir Gawain one of the Arthurian knights, King Arthur and Round Table, famous for his quest with the Green Knight, which was made into a film last year, I think. I started watching uh, on a plane. I ran out of time. I should get around to finishing it. With, what's the actor called? From a Slum Dog Millionaire. Dev Patel. Uh, it's getting interesting. Definitely winning, but ah uh, no ah uh, <laughs> um something went wrong there a slight misclick. Well done, Jack. Too slow. I actually managed to go the whole time last time without uh, losing a game, but uh, I was just too slow this time. But still, the opening went rather well. I enjoyed the game, even if the result went the wrong way. Hello, Liv Tyler. Are you there? Uh, Knight of three. Okay, has to be... I'll start off with g6, giving. I can't play the other kind anymore, but I'm given the option of playing King's Indian or the Perk. Let's go for an advantage to playing this move order. I play this way with white occasionally, with one g3. Let's take control of the center, because I haven't moved the knight yet. 
Now, how ambitious am I going to be? So I push F5. It doesn't really fit in with the Fianchetta. So let's just play sensible moves. H6 is always a bit vague. I want to play bishop e6 without my knight, without uh, knight g5, harassing my bishop. Okay, this is another game without increment, so let's not lose on time twice in a row. He says, sinking into thought. I'm trying to figure out where to put this bishop on c8. Probably I want to fianchetto it. I'd be quite happy with this. Bishop of Fianchetto, then a knight into d4 and swap off knights. And then play c5, and that would be quite a nice structure. Okay, normal move. Let's ignore it. Wondering about attacking that pawn. Okay. Do I liquidate or do I push e4 or eb? e4, knight h4. Is there a good follow up? I can't see e3 working. So I probably have to take this. And we'll take it again while we're thinking. And so I could take that, but I really don't like it on my bishop. But let's just. Oh, I can, can I play some weird things with knight b4. No, my bishop's always hanging. So I'll just push that knight away. So I'm going to go queen d7. I'm going to set other rook in. Should be a bit better with more space. And then on a look out for tactics as they appear. Some fancy things like knight e3, knight f4 I want, but I don't think it's ever going to work. Yeah. I want knight e3, but and queen g4, but the knight is covering the relevant squares. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the rook d8 is the most natural and probably the best move. But let's try keeping the knights on the board. What I want to do is bring this knight around into f3 once the bishops get exchanged. Hello, Zealand Zen. Welcome. Right. I guess I follow my plan. Try and get this knight in. Stopping it. That's a bit loose, g5, but uh, now I've got my knight. A bit unfair if after all that you can just ignore my knight on f3. But maybe you can. In fact, yeah, my king is a bit loose. It being uh, check with queen b1, queen c2 is annoying. But I'll continue my caveman approach. Unfortunately, knight e1, one tempo too slow. To mate. So I'll set a mini cheapo instead. I'll take the h2 with that queen undefended. Let's see. I don't know if I'm throwing queen h5, probably. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go. So this time I'm only two pawns up with 18 seconds. I couldn't, oh, that's the piece, 15 seconds. Now this position's a bit simpler than it was in the last game, so. I'm not guaranteed to get flagged again. Okay, now I should be able to just queen a pawn. I'm pushing the h-pawn, I can do it with green moves. Good game, then Tyler. Another one that got very close. Uh, not sure my plan really worked with the knight around. I think knight won the previous move would have uh, kept everything very solid. Good. 
Flip back to the critical moment. Maybe I had a better plan. But it looks nice around here, but I really want to spawn back on G6. The extra tempo with Quincy 2 check is a nuisance. If I had the pawns on G6, I could consider playing my rook around. E5 to H5 as well to deliver mate. I couldn't see what to do. But I managed to get there in the end. Good game. Silvo, oof. That's a big rating, higher than mine. <laughs> this one's going to be tough. 3 0. Okay, I must not leave myself so short on time. Uh, I'll continue playing my coffee house stuff. If I can take on c6, at least I can play fast. Okay, thank you, Silvo. We've seen this plan once. I'll play the same one. E5 is probably a good move to try and combat uh, the center. But if you compare this to a normal Rosalimo, where I've got knight f3 instead of knight c3, I'm able to play this f4 break, which is a normal plan in the Rosalimo. So much faster. I didn't have to. There's lines where you, this knight on f3 goes back to h2, you play f4 and then comes back again. So again, at least two tempi that way. Back to went e6 and then e5. So that's another tempo. So if I'm three tempi up on a normal opening, then it should be quite a success. Now, I went to start thinking and uh, it's all gone so well while I've just been letting my hand make the moves. H5 is one of those mysterious moves. So I want, considering E5, E6 to attack, or just try and get rid of this bishop with knight e5 or knight h4. Let's get rid of that bishop. So I still want to get rid of that bishop. Now that he's not got the bishop pair, I'll switch plan the knight f5. Taking on g6 would have damaged his structure, sort of, but. The one on g6 after hd would be quite useful to control the f5 square. So I want the same position with my rook on f5. I should have some small advantage here with attack over on the king side, and these pawns are still vulnerable on the c5. Okay, we'll just migrate to the king side and see what happens. I don't know whether the 97 check is really doing anything. So he's trying to. Uh, deal with the problem of those double pawns. Okay, let's ignore it. Let's keep the center. Uh, hello, Blue Haze. I believe not for the uh, English team for the Olympiad. Uh, hopefully, I'll be there. I've accepted, so... I'll almost certainly be there, but I don't know what uh, the rest of the team is. Hopefully it's the same as usual. To play e5 or to prepare e5? Let's prepare it with the rookie one. To play e5, or am I getting something cheaper at the end? So let's go for e5, bishop takes f5, I take his knight, queen takes f6, queen takes f6, g takes f6, rook takes rook. On the root is the rook. The bishop is hanging on f5, but I get back rank mated. So let's play h3. <laughs> and now I'll play e5 because uh, if my calculations were correct on the previous move, he can no longer take my knight. So he just moves the knight. And okay, we'll ask the question about how he's recapturing. Queen is ideal to put maximum pressure on the position, but then I've got 97 check. C takes would repair the structure, but would mean there's no counterplay. Okay, my knight is pretty there on d6. Maybe I can try take on c4. I don't really want to exchange c pawns, so we'll threaten to say the pawn. 
I've given away some light squares, which is a bit annoying. Okay, I can't take it yet because bishop d3 would have forked. Okay, knight. Hmm. Here in the exchange is a practical approach. Probably not the move the computer would think is best, but it means he can play moves much faster. This is position is very solid. Okay, I'll set a cheapo. Oh, which he allows. Hmm. Surprising. Good game, Silver. Yeah, I think this position is maybe it's not so easy for him. Slightly more. Yeah, I thought he'd go f6 here rather than uh, h6. And then the cheapo doesn't work and make on e8. I should be doing very well because I can grab a pawn. But uh, with 18 seconds left against 50, he's probably going to be favourite. Yeah, probably I lost a bit of control there. An interesting game. Thanks, Silver. Hello, Mr. Souza. Is it my imagination or am I getting a lot of whites in a row? Mr. Souza, are you there? I'll give you another few seconds and move on to the next one. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Souza. There are a few challenges that have been there. Uh, since before the uh, battle that started, early ones and understandable if after 45 minutes people have left. Aslan, are you there? Take another few seconds and we'll move on. Nope, okay. Bye, Aslan. I did clear the old challenges, so. Oh, okay. Nikki Mullins, hello. That was my black in that game. Oh, and Alakai, the other side of the board. Now, maybe Nikki can show me what you're supposed to play against the four pawns. This was my dilemma last time. Actually, I was inspired by the Banter Blitz to play the Alakai in the title Tuesday. Uh, but of course, my GM opponent. Play the four pawns in the head. No idea what I was supposed to do with black. Got crushed. This is the main line. Bishop b4. I think that one's unusual. There's some strange stuff going into an endgame with bishop g4 and taking on f3. And is this waking up bishop d3? I can't remember. And the other main line is to play the bishop to e7 and play f6, try to undermine the center. So this is one of the positions that white should be quite a lot better with his space and central control, but black has a lot of tricks at the same time. You have to be careful as white to navigate the tricks. For instance, here I want to castle, but then his knight takes d4 a problem. Bishop d4, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, queen takes d4, check. And so I should play a move to prepare that. Let's kick the bishop. I'm still allowing a trick. My idea was uh, after bishop takes e3, b takes, as we'll see. After bishop takes f3, I'll have to recapture the pawn, I think. So if I take with the queen, then knight takes e5, because my bishop isn't defended on d3. And that doesn't look good for me. So. so put with pawn isn't the end of the world, but it wasn't my intention. What the check, or should we go for a walk? <laughs> my dog just looked up at me at that point. Okay, let's perambulate around to c2. I'm hoping that my big pawn formation in the center give the king enough safety. Okay. 
move off the B file. I just need a couple moves to coordinate my pieces and then I can consolidate bishop pair and center. And I'm hoping that my king might even be the safer on e2 on c2 as well. I'll be able to attack down the b file. Probably some c5 needs to be played at some point, but it looks a bit speculative. I'm going on the other side with f5. Can I try and exploit that one? I think c5 probably did need to be played just to try and put a bit of pressure on my king. It's hard pushing pawns in front of your own. The run with rook g1 for him was a throwing bishop g5, forking queen and rook. So he stopped that, but allowed me to pick up the g7 pawn. That's a pawn and it's a way in. With rook g1 next. The queen, I'm not sure if it's strong or weak on h4. It doesn't seem to be doing a lot at the moment. I think I can just play around it. I'm wondering if there's any way of trapping it. I guess a pair of rooks will get exchanged and then rook d7. Hi, dangerous ride. Thanks for the game. Yeah, we played in the first game, New Zealand. I think it was the first game, right? Things start blurring. Let me show off uh, one of the key ideas in my Grand Prix repertoire. Now, those knights are a bit odd. Knights on the room are dim, but they are controlling a lot of squares or something being trapped at the moment but let's trust that this one's never going to get oops didn't mean to draw an arrow to it i don't know how to undo the arrow but uh this knight on a4 can't get back again the idea is to play bishop b5 and round to win that knight so c6 stops it can i go one square further now which tack. It's all been about consolidation in the game so far, but which way six is uh, instead of just going for the mate. Deals with that. Now, do I have any clever way of getting in here? I was a bit careful, of course, with my king, just hanging around in the center. At the moment, my queen is doing a good job of defending, but. If I get carried away going for mate myself, then I'll allow some counterplay. Next question is, is my bishop hanging next move? Let's say not. And my queen is going to pick up at least one of those knights if the bishop's taken. Hello, Rick. Uh, what opening would I recommend against 1e4 to pair with the King's Indian? That's a good question. We've been discussing it a fair bit on the uh, chessable forum. Some people saying the perk or modern, which is similar structures. Uh, the reason that I don't really play the perk anymore is that white can be much more aggressive than he can in the King's Indian. That extra tempo with the pawn still on c2 rather than c4 means that the plans for f4 the Austrian attack is so much more uh, venomous than the four pawns attack against the King's Indian. But if you're not too worried about that, then that's a possibility. As you suggest, the Sicilian dragon, I mean, it is the pairing that I've traditionally done. Oh, I got distracted and I've got very lucky that Queen does H2s. I didn't think there were any checks at all. But that's a big one, but my bishop can block it. Yeah, the dragon was my pairing. Um, but the dragon is much more 
tactical. Thanks for the game, Nikki. Still, I, I appreciate there are a lot of uh, combinations and tricks there for black that white has to be wary of. I feel I fell into some there. But still think four pawns is a bit of a problem for the other count. Hello, oops, kitty, are you there? Yes, this is in dragon compared to the King's Indian. It's a lot more, uh, it's a lot sharper. The lines are more forcing. Yeah, let's try the other kind. Let's try the second one. And so I think it's a good opening. Um, but King's Indian, in general, you can play. Now is it I take or C6 or E6? I don't know. Right, E6. There's a lot of time, but was that a move? I thought white normally defended that one, C5. I'm wondering if I've got some ideas here. With taking on C5 and Queen H4. How do I get it to work? Or do I just let my time run out while I'm trying to figure it out? Oh, I can't. I'll just take the pawn on offer. But I'm threatening to take an f2 and then queen h4 check. But queen g4 attacking me before I get to attack. That's not very sporting. And bishop. Is bishop g5 a problem? So if I castle bishop h6 wins at least exchange. Bishop g5 I don't think is a problem. I don't really want to play g6 and weaken my dark squares that much though, so let's defend the pawn French style with king f8. But yeah, I think um, I quite like the delayed Smyslov or Steinitz variations of the row of the pairs, depending exactly what move order you play. They seem to have different names. But something where you play, make a move, and then I'll try and explain. Let's ask the question to the Queen. Yeah, where you go e5, knight c6, a6, maybe, but then you go g6, bishop g7 anyway. And if you can provoke white into playing d5, then positions are very similar to the King's Indian. You often get the same kind of position, but with the bishop on c8 already exchanged. Changes the, the dynamics a bit. You sort of have a better version in that you're further ahead by playing it in a Lopez structure. Your development and white's not make, not crashing through on the queen side, but without this bishop on c8, you're not going to mate white either. The games are a bit slower. But the themes are still very similar. Oh, knight g5, bishop g6 are annoying threats. So just move over. Uh, pretty risky to play Sicilian dragon. I can start attacking you early. Uh, yeah, dangerous ride. I mean, it's a very double edged opening that white can choose how aggressive he wants to be. You can have attack lines. In general, black, a lot of uh, Sicilians, black is better if you survive, because you've got these two central pawns against the one. You've got a nice structure. But you're giving white some initiative and some time to attack you. So things become very sharp, with white obliged to attack. Try and get my pieces out over here. A bit like this position, where I'm a pawn up. So long term, I should be doing well. but. I'm a bit passive at the moment. Let's try to take some central squares. And these, so yeah, you could have attack where white is just going for mate with Fisher style, h4, h5, sack, sack mate. Uh, but black gets very strong counterplay as well. But because it's all so sharp, like some knight of lines, it's all being uh, analyzed out as well. Which is generally fine, but a bit frustrating for me, for example, if I'm playing some strong FMs, IMs who've uh, done a lot of work, then they're able to play just with a computer. 
advice rather than uh, actually having to think. Whereas in the King's Indian, there's still some very long lines and double-edged with attacks on both sides of the board, but you can't really uh, just space bar your way through, as they say, because the position is uh, slower. There's more maneuvering and so more choices. So your opponent will at some point have to think. Now, oh, I've not got very much time. I get this rook involved in the game. If I saw this position, I certainly wouldn't guess it came from Alakai. I'd guess some sort of French or Karakai. Yeah, I've seen the French uh, also recommended Rick. But I think I've... Uh, what's happening here? I think I might lose the exchange because this rook that I tried to activate has run out of squares. But at least I've got my nice structure and I'll have a pawn for it. But some eight, yeah. I want to spend that to d5, but it's not working. Because f6 did fork bishop and rook, but rook to c6 and my rook was uh, hanging. So yeah, the French is also a perfectly legitimate I always just feel sorry for the bishop on c8 in the in the French, though. I don't want to be left with a horrible bishop. I think my uh, opening choice has always been dark squared. Structures we're playing. Let's try and get a good bishop on g7. But so I understand. You want a good bishop on e7 instead, but you don't normally kill the bishop on c8. And it might take a while to get into the game. Ah. Sorry, my dog just shook there. I heard her collar. Uh, yeah, normally this bishop at least gets some attacking prospects. I know that French players would also say that it's the same in the French. It looks bad, but it comes to life and wins the game for you. Now, oops, he still got very good compensation for the pawn with the bishop pair. But at least have my rooks are close to being connected. Let's try and deflect that bishop first. I want to uh, somehow deliver mate with rook d1 and use my super powerful bishop on d5 that escaped. Okay, I guess I want to rerun this knight around. My rook is a bit short on squares yet again. It would be a theme for this game. Now we'll get some, get some exchanges in the technical phase. What do I want to be left on the board? I'm not sure. I decided to do it this way just so that my king can now run. I should have cut off his king first. Two pawns, but double rooking games are. Extremely complicated. In general, have a higher drawing margin than single rooks. Let's have a rook behind the pawn. Simple plan. I don't think I'm getting mated, right? Well, rookie seven is a nice try. It's uh, worth trying. Oh no, it doesn't. Sorry, you. <laughs> have the g4 square net. I thought for a second rookie 5 would be made. But, uh, so maybe g4 check should be tried here, hoping for h takes and then rookie 7, hoping for queen and then rookie 5 net. I think probably too much to hope for. But thanks, Oops Kitty. That was an interesting game. I felt under a lot of pressure. 
Hello, Avenge, number five. Uh, Susan Sen, any outdoor adventures planned? Uh, good question. I think we're going to, most of my calendar is busy uh, playing E6. Let's try my coffee house stuff again with knight f3. Idea of transposing to some open Sicilians. I thought this one wasn't supposed to work so well, but can't really remember why. I can't remember if I was supposed to play d4 or this check. This pawn is a bit loose on d5. I think I'll have to take it next move. Yeah, busy with lots of chess things. I think that we'll go on holiday to the beach uh, early June. Other than that, my outdoor adventures are just walking the dog, really. I have lots of trips to local farms and local playgrounds. I grab this one too. It's very nice to seven or taking the rook, so I think and that has to be taken. I was wondering, queen e7 check would have stopped me castling, but after king d1, both the rook on a8 and rook e1, uh, pinning the queen, but big problems. But my opening's definitely been a success here. Snaffed a couple of pawns, seems to figure out how I'm developing this bishop, and all is good in the world. Actually, let's fish about. A couple of ones up. Actually, that wasn't a very good move. Not very. Knight a4, last move, defending, my, defending his pawn on c5 and attacking mine on b2. Would have been annoying. Certainly haven't played this very smoothly. But a big advantage, I still have. A minute and a half. Normally by this stage I would be forced to pre-move everything. Dennis Ride, do you think everyone can become a GM if they study enough? Hmm. I don't well, I don't know, but I don't think so. Um. It's always hard to know. Of course, you study more as something you're good at as well. Someone who uh, struggles, who doesn't have any aptitude for the game at the start, is unlikely to dedicate the amount of time needed to become a GM anyway. But yeah, I think watching people struggle with the GM title, I think uh, the voice have put in a lot of time. So you need to do more than, you need to have some natural feel for the game, some sort. But I think you can get uh, very strong without. But I think, yeah, for GM you need something. But again, it's quite hard to know whether it's simply because it's easier to study if you are good at it. I thought you do. I think you need to start winning some games fairly early to get interested in chess. If your only experience is losing, then you're likely to get disheartened quite quickly. This is becoming a bit tricky. I just need to make sure I don't get uh, back rank mated here. Uh, or losing on time. Oh, I forgot there was no, uh, <laughs> that was careless of me. No increment. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> well done, Avenge. You got me while I was distracted. Just enjoying the game.
It's a couple down from uh, forgetting to move. That's quite a big part of playing Blitz. Hello, Earl Hines. Let's see if 3-0, uh, if I can move faster in this one. What should we play this time? Oh, the Elephant Gambit. Okay, let's decline it. So what is happening here? I'm wanting, probably because I lost the last game, to be doing some caveman stuff with Scholar's Mate. Well, it doesn't work, but I'm tempted. Let's go for it. Maybe it's theory if Queen E7 was played so fast. I was wondering about Queen takes D4, keeping the extra piece. But now I think I'll have to take back. I'd like to keep the Queens on the board, but after D takes G6, I don't think I'm able to keep that. I'll have to either exchange queens or lose the pawn. So I'll take with the queen. Yeah, I think that was a much better time management than me. Always check what time control you're playing. Even the world champion can lose on time when he forgets. So again, the best header than Topilov, where he thought there was additional time move 60. So the excitement of the elephant gambit has calmed down a bit. I think I'm a bit better with the bishop pair. The pawn on c7 is a bit awkward to defend. But I haven't refuted it. Okay. I want to keep my bishops. It's not so easy to keep my bishops. With f5, f4 coming to try and trap that. So I'll regroup. Threaten c4, taking both knights. So it's a knight. It's going to hop back to c6. It's hard to balance. Like my last couple of moves, I've gone back quite passive, but I'm banking on long term the bishop pair being a good trump. But it's difficult at this point to know whether uh, I will turn out whether it'll turn out that I can consolidate, or if I'll be forced to give up the bishop anyway with Black's initiative, in which case the whole thing was a waste of time. So now I probably need to decide what my plan is. Am I pushing on the queen side or on the king side? B4 or G4? Or do I have an interesting trick? I could have played last move as well. So the pawn can't be taken because C4 again and both knights will be attacked. Lots of colours for those knights. Uh, and now my threat is to play b4 and trapping the knight on a5. So b6 to give the knight some luft. So now we'll defend the pawn. Now my piece is going to start going forward. Remind El Hines about the problem with this pawn on c7. I didn't want to allow c6. Let's continue hopping. Position certainly improved my knight and its adventure around into uh, the c6 square. And let's be greedy and push on the king side as well. So this bishop has not got a lot of squares on g6. Let's go h4, h5. Is that d3 check going to be annoying? Maybe, but most annoying is going to be to lose on time again. So. 
page for Oh, that's going to be an interesting choice. Let's uh, try and get my rook involved. But an H file might be able to do the mint. Let's pin that knight. It's quite a piece in active positions. I want some position where I get the other rook. Ah, well, now I can do it more easily. What I wanted was. Uh, to sack my rook with rook takes g8, followed by 97 check, and the other rook to the mate down the h5. But without that knight on c5, now, uh, yeah, now it was mate anyway, because I had uh, to king e8. Through those arrows, I can take king d7 and then knight e5 to mate. Good game. Well, I didn't refute the elephant gambit there. Oh, hello, why must I lose? Welcome. Uh, let's go back to a book. I like I last time. So it's a classical setup. That's going to be a I'll just castle. Knight takes e4 is the other way of playing. The idea that after knight takes d5, fork to bishop and knight. Plus, I have some sort of uh, hippo. Not an opening with the greatest reputation in general, because white can just attack you. But with the knights on f3 and c3, it's going to be hard to play any of the levers like f4, f5, or c4, c5. Oops. So it should be fairly safe. Attack this pawn on e4. Claiming that the bishop that took two tempi to get to b3 is a bit misplaced there. Could do with it being on d3. Uh, to take that or to ignore it. Well, I can't ignore it because my knight's attacked. But move my knight, we'll take the pawn. Some weird stuff happening with knight g4, bishop g5, taking on f3. But my rook is hanging at the end, so we'll take it. But now, hopefully, I'll, I've got a good bishop on b7 and some pressure gets upon on d4. Thanks, L. That was a good game. I wasn't very happy when I had to start retreating my bishops. Around there, I think you must have been completely fine. Now, how to increase the pressure? Do I want to play c5 or not? Not clear, so I'll complete my hedgehog with a6, my hippo. c5 is probably going to be my break. I don't need to rush with it. Another plan is to take on e5, but I think then d and f4 is going to be a bit annoying. I wish on g7 won't have much future. Now, um, h6, I'm a bit worried about some knight sack. Knight takes f7. Does it work? I have to take with the king. Probably it doesn't work. H6 is loosening up my king side a little bit. G5 is a good move. Okay, I'm not very happy, but I'll provoke knight takes f7. So it doesn't work yet. After the bishop drops back, what am I going to do? Now I play g5 to release a bit of pressure. 
but it does weaken my king side as well. Or should I just move my king off this bishop, looking down, menacing it? Do I go king h7? Hmm, I don't really like that either because I have to f4. Okay, let's weaken myself. Problem is, I, if I gave white enough time for f4, I was in an unpleasant bind and didn't see how I could activate. I still have to watch out for these very sacks and d5. So I go c5 is d5. Too much calculation, which I'm completely failing to do. Okay, let's just get rid of that knight. It's bothered me for too long. When your opponent is attacking you, it's generally good to start exchanging some pieces. Release the pressure a bit. That's bishop to d5. Am I going to exchange more with knight d5? Oh, going for the more aggressive one. This is what was worrying me before. I was hoping with my pawn on g5, it was going to be a bit harder to create this box for my bishop on g7. Knight d5 was more natural, but I was a bit worried everything would get exchanged and then e6. Mm, okay, we'll grab that. And then let's see. There was that other game from the other kind where the bishop suddenly became a strong piece on b7. It might be similar here. On a good day. Ooh, but I'm very sharp. So if I take on G, that's probably a good move. I take on G2, take on H6. I'm getting very scared. Queen F8. Yeah, I don't think I can allow that. Uh, okay, five seconds. Let's rush some piece over to the king side. An open G file becomes incredibly sharp. And I'm uh, trying to defuse it. The idea is to get rid of these queens. So I'm going to be a pawn down with the queens off the board, but I hope the knight and h4 is going to be really good, coupled with this from b7. And uh, I still have some mating ideas on my own. At least all my pieces will be attacking. Oh, that's what? I think I'll just take this, can't I? Yeah, not quite sure what, uh, what was missed there. Do I have a mate? Should I just take this? I should probably take the rook right. Okay, the two second increment should be sufficient now. There's the mate. Oof, good game. That <laughs> became very uh, unpleasant for me. But by this point, I think I'm quite happy. So if the queen's coming off the board, then my king is very safe. I've got a good compensation on the light squares, and typically I've got such a good bishop on b7 against the one on b3 that's blocked out. A few moves before this, oops. this queen g4 was a great move. And I was very scared here. I think taking the pawn with the queen, keeping white's king safe, would have uh, put me under a lot of pressure. Vitonega, hello. Sorry, I have no idea how to pronounce your name. Uh, okay, we'll go for that three again. Uh, Blue Haze, have I ever played the Scandi with black? Yes, I have. I uh, played the Queen D6 Scandinavian a fair bit at some point when I lost. Uh, Lost faith with the dragon, or as an I am. 
I think I switched to the Dragadorf and then uh, I played the Scandinavian. I guess I shouldn't set the ball. Uh, I also played this Pat's variation of Queen E5 check, which was recommended to me at the World Youths. But, uh, not a, I wouldn't recommend it. I think I'm supposed to take this with the pawn only, but let's try the knight. Something a bit unusual. Yeah, queen five check with queen to slip is on a bad square. But queen d6 I played uh, quite a bit. As a solid, quite easy to learn opening. Let's have knight. And Ricky, have I ever played Judith? Holger, I have, um, I was lucky enough to play her in the London Chess Classic one year when it was a rapid event, so only a rapid chess, but uh, I lost with white and then won with black in a dragon. Some very sharp Yucatan attack, as to be expected. Uh, dangerous ride. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, why do you think most people playing knight of six instead of d5 against one d4? Uh, that's a good question. I, most people are playing a Nimzo. Uh, Queen's Gambit declined repertoire, aren't they? They commit to playing d5 once white up to knight on f3. But before that, they're trying to stay a bit more flexible. They don't necessarily have to play d5. They go knight of six and e6. Of course, then there are the Grunfeld fans as well, with knight of six, g6. And the few of us thought Kings Indians with uh, knight of six, g6 as well. So we all combine and play knight of six. If Black plays d4, d5, they probably want to play some sort of Slav or Queen's Gambit accepted. And you could play that move order for a Queen's Gambit declined as well. There's not any need. I think uh, we're getting a bit of a think here, but there's a problem because I'm attacking both the knight on d5 and the g7 pawn. Chosen to defend the knight, but now my pieces can swing in. So if I get my knight to f6, clearly it's mate. If that knight from d5 is removed. So c4 or bishop c4 or knight h5 are all tempting. Let's start with knight h5. I don't think I have an immediate threat. Right, my threat is to attack the knight on d5 when I'll be mate on f6. When g4 isn't mate because the knight is covering. So defending the knight, so this one can move. Now I'll attack it with the pawn. Checkmate. The Ponziani with c3 had the other c these days, but it's got some venom too. I prepared it for one of a different London chess classic. Uh, and okay, there's various good lines for that, but it could do with some uh, a bit of a resurgence, I think. Hello, Jose Moya. Go black. Now I played. I've lost track now. Did I play the other hand or the perk in the most recent? It was a perk with bishop c4. Yes, why must I lose, wasn't it? So, go back to the other hand. And what line is Jose going to play? This is the first game in these couple of banter sessions where. My opponents played the classical line with that of three. Uh, 
Now knight d7, knight takes f7 is some strange line that you see. That might be a draw. I don't really want to offer the player. I don't think the c6 is exactly what you're supposed to do. We now have a Scandinavian with, do you imagine I'd taken with the queen and come back again to d8? But in the Scandinavian, you don't really want to allow c4. Should be a quite a pleasant position for white. But still, I'm solid. I can develop my pieces. As I said, that I was a bit worried about d5 before I played e6. But once I've got e6, I've got the caro setup. If I can develop all my pieces, then you hope the pawn on d4 is a slight weakness. It can't be defended by another pawn. Of course, white can sometimes break with d5 and liquidate. I don't know where I want to buy a bishop. b4, e6, sorry, b4, d6, e7. I can be smart and go to c5, but it doesn't really achieve anything. It's, I'll be uh, a bit passive on e7. I was about to drop on d6, but bishop g5 looked a bit annoying. Now is d5 going to liquidate everything? I don't think it works yet. Because I'll be able to pin with rook d8. I take one to rook d8 and the bottom's lost. So now we get the, sort of the usual position you get out of the opening of these structures. And uh, one of us has to come up with a plan. Try and channel my inner Keith Arkell here. For a his games, he seems to do nothing at all, wait for White to make some weaknesses, and then uh, win in 100 moves, Just cruelly exploits those weaknesses. What I'm trying to do with b4. You want to be aggressive as white and use no extra space, but every pawn push does create another weakness. So pawn on d4, pawn on c4. Can't be turned by other pawns now. Do I want to fix things with b5? Yeah. Ask the question. Possibly on both aren't it's the best move here. But you only get one opportunity to play it. Okay, now the plan is eventually to win either the d4 or b4 pawns. And not lose on time in the process. Oh. I get to threaten me tomorrow. I wasn't expecting that. Oh. I get to play mate one. Sorry, Jose, you got distracted by the uh, strategic battle over on the queen side. I think with some normal move there, g3, the position was still bound. Oh, Rubes could see again. Okay, we well, get lucky and get second game if you're still around. But you may well have left after the first one. Okay, I won't wait for two of them. Send me a couple of challenges. Money King, 37. Hello. Continue my 2 knights, 3 So far, it's been working very well. So, 94, we get quite different structures to. Uh, Taking on c6 or a Grand Prix with f4 comes like now. That's got quite a big question about whether to take this bishop or not. On one hand, the bishop there is useful, uh, but white gains yet more time in some open Sicilian once you play d4. So, bigger risk reward, bishop pair and the center for black, but bigger initiative for white. 
those scrolls make the threat. This looks like beginner chess, but it's actually uh, very tricky for black because I combine mate on f7 with going after this pawn on d4. And it's difficult to defend both. I think that from when I wrote the books, the d5 here is not is probably necessary and isn't actually ridiculous for black at all. You get quite good compensation for the pawn. Here, my knight looks a bit weird on d4, but I've not uh, weakened anything to collect the pawn. Which way to go with the queen? Can I get away with g3? Let's be safe. Loose pieces drop off after all, so I'll defend a couple of them. Although I'm not very happy with that move at all. In hindsight, I would go to g3. d5 now starts to punish my pieces. Uh, let's not allow d5 at least with gain of tempo again. Right, let's try and get these pieces to look a bit more normal. Could I just trap that bishop after 97? Could I have played h3 thus move? What was your idea, Monkey King? If you've gone to h5, then g4, trap the bishop. But there was no other good square. I was so anxious to start my development. So I think I missed an opportunity there. I'm going to waste yet more time with this bishop. I'm not that worried about keeping it. But the problem is the bishop is defending my pawn on c2. So I have to either move it again or I really don't want to move it again, so I'll play c3. I'm desperate just to complete my development. Uh, any plans for a dragon course? Not imminently, no, with uh, Anish. After all, has his lifetime repertoire on the dragon out. Um, I know that there's some interest for a look at the Yugoslav attack lines. Um, so maybe that would be a plan for the future. To look at some of the more aggressive lines. And his recommendations are a solid way of playing the dragon with Bishop e6 challenging the bishop, which looks like a decent way of playing, but it's uh, more sensible than the kind of positions dragon players are often looking for with the wild attacks on both sides of the, of the board. But yeah, it'd be interesting to analyze those. But it's been a while as well, so I'd want to update my own analysis before embarking on a project like that. I don't want to write most of it and then reach something that I can't find a solution to. I uh, volunteered you into a false sense of security, Jose, in that game. But it looked like it was all about the battle on the queen side. And it was, but uh, <laughs> it was one trick. I'm not sure whether what I'm doing exactly here. My knight looks very pretty on c5. I've got this extra pawn. I'll just try and create a weakness with f6. One day soon, I'll develop my bishop. And I've completed my development. Is that day today? I'm slightly reluctant because my pawn on d3 is a bit vulnerable. So I have to be careful still. 
Bishop f2 looks artificial. So I'll defend it this way. What's my long term plan to win this game? Exchanging pieces would be nice, but I can't see a way to do it. Probably I just keep moving my pieces around and hope that a, a plan comes to me. This d3 pawn is still a bit of a problem. It's not that pleasant addition to play as black either, because uh, I don't think there's very, at least I'm hoping there's no active plan that doesn't just weaken black's position. I think eventually I'm going to push either d4 or b5. But I want to uh, go on position ready first. Let's create some luft. Slight change of plan. Bishop on c6 is doing a good job of defending the queen side. Okay, I'm hoping that this is a case of linking but, uh, an active move for the sake of playing an active move. But this is a weakening black position a bit. It's also sharp. Can I go knight e4? That's my intention. I'm not sure. Because there is some counterplay that gets up on g2. Uh, things always go wrong when I have to start calculating. There are too many pins here. So let's give the exchange rather than allowing the check on h7. I wasn't sure if there's was more than a check. A lot has been staked on this pawn. Two rooks. Uh, I'll give one piece back. Which one? D8. Just two. Be able to activate my pieces. Rook f5 was my idea, but I didn't want to allow queen h4. I'd like to mate on the h file. Uh, possible. The main thing is just to try and not allow some mate. Good game, Monkey King. That was all very sharp until. Uh, and I think my position was very good out of the opening, but uh, around here, after f5, it's a big mess. Maybe we should take e4 here and f4. Would have kept it very complicated. Bridge e6 was the natural move, but I'm hoping there wasn't anything good here for black. But a computer probably would laugh at me here. But interesting game, thanks. Uh, coming up towards the end now. Hello, Beth Hamon. You were there at the start. Are you still there? Sorry, it's taken a while to accept your challenge with the random. So it's probably only time for one more, possibly last two. Uh, sorry, Beth, you've uh, been called away. Syrian 77, hello, are you there? 2315. We're going to have three again, so I'll keep the option open of the modern uh, perk or King's Indian. Okay, let's simply play my course to finish. Can't remember actually what move order I recommend here. D3 is a King's Indian attack, so you can block it with D5. And playing E4 now would be a close Sicilian kind of thing. Okay, so we play a close Sicilian, but the more aggressive lines would be with this pawn on f4. I quite like this setup, because white's play is really to 
try and take the center long term with c3 d4. But that's difficult to achieve with uh, our pawns on e5 and c5. Meantime, our plan is probably to play d5 at the right moment and then attack this weakness on d3. Now, I feel I might have had this position against the very talented English I am Amit Ghazi, who's same age as me. Uh, could easily have been a grandmaster, but didn't dedicate his life to chess. But he beat me in uh, a rapid play in London so last summer. We had some extreme, he always plays King's Indian attack. We had some extremely similar position to this. Like I might be in this position. And although I lost, I thought I was doing well at some point around here. Yeah, I think this was even it. And he took on c5, and I took on d3 on autopilot, and it was some messy game. I actually lost on time, which was the first time I'd ever lost on time in a, a non-blitz game without knowing that uh, I was short on time even. I just, uh, I looked at his clock, but forgot to look at mine. So he's chosen to drop back instead. I'm not sure that makes so much sense, does it? Because I can still take this pawn. This should be quite a big extra pawn on d3. So, <laughs> are you know? Are you saying Anish knows some solid drawish lines? Well, I think he uh, knows pretty much everything, right? But, uh, he knows the correct way to play chess and going into the Yugoslav attack chaos probably doesn't fit with his philosophy of playing. But I think as dragon players, that's what we want. That's it. Those messes, the adrenaline rush as uh, you race your attack against your opponents. The king wide open, but uh, some sack on c3 or b2 and delivering mate. This has gone rather well. Good advert for the course to finish on. Got a big extra pawn on d3. Some big light squares. My knight's jumping into b3 or c4. Okay, I'm grabbing the pawn, but I should be careful not to get mated. But white's pieces are generally pointing the wrong way. I look at my queen side. So as long as I'm not too careless, this should be going well. Now can the careless probably see get carried away. But can I play d2 here? The idea thinks so. So if the rook moves, then my pawn is one square for closer to queening. I'll take the rook. OK. Am I missing something here? So I could just take this now. There's a whole rook rather than uh, just the exchange, which should be too much. Just to move back, the critical move I thought was to take with the knight on d2, but then I was hoping I had got a minute and a half, enough time. Yeah, I was hoping that after knight takes d2, I could play bishop says h6. Hang the queen, queen takes h6, and then the knight would be hanging, the queen takes d2. Now it's not quite the end of it, because the queens can be exchanged, my, I'm losing the exchange at the end, but my bishop and knight should be better than the rook and pawn there. But still, that's far more of a, not quite to deal with my stupid arrows, <laughs> um, much more of a test than this. But it should just be an extra rook for a pawn, and that's not trapped. Can always come back to b3. Okay, let's just 
Get some pieces off the board. Uh, Dennis Ride. What are the main differences between Super GM and Normal GM? Probably the. Uh, well, probably the same as at every level, the difference between stronger players. Super GMs are just a bit better at everything, depending on which one you're talking about. But generally, their theoretical knowledge will be better. Should be a bit careful here. Um, much more consistent as well. There are a lot of normal GMs who can put up a good fight and beat the super GMs on their day, but could also lose to significantly weaker opponents. But yeah, I think just everything. The stamina is generally going to be better too. I don't think there's one magical thing. That, uh, for example, if you gave one element improvement to my play, I wouldn't magically become Magnus. It's uh, everything that needs work. Anyway, uh, I think that's it for tonight. So thanks a lot for everyone for joining me. Um, lost a couple on time, which was to be expected there. But uh, overall, I think the level was OK, and we had some interesting games. And uh, I hope you guys tune in and watch the Chessful Masters starting on Thursday, where I'll give the King's Indian a whirl and uh, hopefully get some not just interesting positions but some points as well so uh, thanks everyone and uh, see you soon hi everybody and welcome to our new video series my name is Jan Gustafsson and I'm thrilled to be reunited with fellow Magnus Carlsen's trainers seconds Peter Heine Nielsen Magnus Carlsen's head coach and Laurent Fressinet Magnus Carlsen's French coach are both here and we will be going through the World Championship match 2021. Our experiences with it, the games, what we prepared, where we felt things went well, where we felt things didn't go well. Peter, we have different perspectives because we were in different locations. Very much. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about it because you were in Thailand during all the match and I was in Dubai with the Magnus and the Geologist, his non-chess team. So I see some kind of debriefing where we will discuss what was the mood in Dubai, what was happening in the technical department in Thailand, and we got to sort of basically compare notes and uh, yeah, get the two kind of inside looks uh, from the match. Very much so. And Laurent, we are actually in your private home. Thanks for having us. It's a big pleasure to, to welcome both of you. And I'm sure it will be interesting to talk to you again about the match. Likewise. So we hope you guys enjoy the series with our behind-the-scenes insights. <laughs> See you then. <laughs>